Hey guys, it's Proofman from Overclocking TV and today I'm going to be hosting the show because Atlas is submerged by all the reviews of the show for this one and for this episode 12 of season 4 I'm being joined by Bill Zoid and Tullius. What's up guys? Hello. How's it going? Uh, all good here. So tonight we have quite a few topics to discuss and uh, well let's uh, jump in. The first thing we always do with the show is the competition updates to use it up to now. Awesome. Well, there, uh, there's actually too much going on. We're, we're actually going to have to go through this quick because we'll never get through it otherwise. So let me just get, yeah, I'll just run through this. So there's there's um, the Pro C 2017. Well, the round three is uh, currently running. You've got Gunslinger in in the, in first place. You've got uh, Jickman 1965 in second place and PKBO in um, third place. JPM Boy and Strato Z get in fourth and fifth. So this competition, you've got not only seven days left, just about seven and a half days left. 121 overclockers. So it's it's. It's looking pretty good. I mean, now is when all the people who've got their score saved up are going to start submitting in the next couple of days. So this is definitely one to follow. Lots of action coming here. I'm predicting that. And then you obviously got um, Division One uh, in uh, in the in the Challenger Division, which is basically Division One Round Three. Icky is still in the lead. Uh, Jickman is in uh, second, and Sandalau is in third. So that's basically division. Yeah, that's basically division one. Then you've got you've got division two. You've got Icky in the lead again. So he's 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 held on to this lead for a while now. Only seven days left to go in this one as well. So so just like the earlier comp, you got Icky in the lead, Jickman, and then Sam's rules in third place. And um, if you look at uh, division three round three, you've got RS Nino in the lead. Uh, X Mech in second position and Iki in third. So this is one round where Iki hasn't done so well, but it's really, really close. So it's four, 487 to 485 to 480. So just one one good score from Iki will see him, you know, kind of take the lead in this one as well. If he's actually, yeah, if he's got a better score, then now it's time to kind of put it in. But well, if yeah. he's not putting a better score, there's no way he can claim with the ranking. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the but, very basics of it. <laughs> It's 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 very very close. There's literally like seven points in this. So yeah, just one good score could literally change change the way that round goes. And uh, division four round three, you've got jumper one one eight in the lead. I don't know if he's in the, if he's in the chat today, but he's the, he's he's a regular. You've got jumper one one eight in the lead. Uh, CB Jost in second and uh, Zebi Pew in third. I hope I got that right. Uh, yeah, I mean, even here, it's it's not that close. Uh, the top three are spaced by pretty pretty widely, but then but then the fight is actually for third position, with uh, 435 for third, uh, fourth is 432, and fifth is 431. In fact, even sixth is 427. So any one of these guys could literally take you know positions um, very close, very closely for I think for third place in uh, division four. And then if you look at uh, Division 5, you've got uh, Siux, Super Pat Naldo, and Strato CZ, and an Indian, K Satya in fourth. Um, this one also, yeah, again, people are pretty widely spaced, but the fight could be on for second position here, 433 to 425. It's just eight points that just, yeah. So I think second position you potentially could change, but otherwise... Right now, as it as, as it stands, they're pretty widely spaced. Actually, sixth and fifth are also pretty close, 393 to 397. So that's definitely something. Bearborn.net, I mean, he can pull out some awesome scores as well. So definitely somebody to look out for. And Kesatia from India is fourth. So that's pretty much done with round five. Round six, we've got uh, Seahawks Hunt, Spider 2275, and Jumper 118. Bruno is in fourth. And uh, number one spank is in is in fifth. Even here, the uh, first and second could swap places for 62 to 455, but then the rest are kind of spaced up uh, spaced apart. 439, 412, 406. Actually, fifth and sixth are pretty much identical. It's just 0.6 in there. So fifth and sixth will also swap positions. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's uh, lots and lo lots and lots of action. Only seven days left. 
I'm expecting really, really, really good things from pretty much all of these guys in the next seven days. I'm sure some some of these positions are definitely going to change. So for the next show, we'll have for the next show. That's gonna be it. That's gonna be the end. Eh? Yeah. And um, yeah, if you look at uh, round seven, then you've got Jickman, Scanic, and Mac Beach in for second, third. PKBO in fourth, and uh, Johnny in fifth. But again, here it looks pretty pretty widely spaced. So. I think right now, as it stands, I don't think any of the positions are actually in threat here. And then if you look at Team Cup, uh, which is, I think, this is going to be one heck of a competition as well. Seven days left. Again, so lots and lots of action going to be there for the next show. We might have to do like whole separate section, maybe just, just for, like the results that are going to come out because they're going to be incredible. And then you've got Overclock last night, Warp 9 Systems, Extreme Overdrive, OCT Italy, and Reddit Overclock. Reddit has climbed up a, has climbed up a place. The last week, I think they were in fifth. Right now, they're in fourth. So, good job on the Reddit overclocking team. They're doing good without you, Bilzo, right? Yeah, they're doing just fine. I mean, I said it before. I didn't really do much for the team. <laughs> just made it. Um, and deleted any... Well, at the start, I bothered with deleting incorrect submissions. But towards the end, I kind of gave up. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't much of a captain. <laughs> I'm sure they miss me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so overclock done there, Warp 9 systems, extreme OC drive, ready to overclocking, ROG check OC, fifth place, overclockers are cop and hardware Canucks still hanging on in, in seventh position. Cow caught land in eighth. So good job everybody. You've got overclockers.ua and team MLG. Good job everybody. And I'm thinking there's gonna be lots of action in this one coming. Oh, for so sure. in, in seven days we have the uh, the Pro OC finishing, Pro OC round three, and we have the Team Cup as well. That's gonna be an insane time on SW but so guys, if you want to post yeah. your scores, don't send by. Don't send by. <laughs> the server will die. No no no, that's, that's even worse than that. Next week, that's the SWBot World Tour in Russia. Which means that's gonna be even more fun because if that's breaking, there's no one to fix it. <laughs> oh, <No>. oh. <laughs> think about that twice there's the team cup finishing with a lot of stages and a lot of people competing. there's all the pro OC finishing like that's gonna be insane people posting things and there's the world tour which means either if you have to fix it I guess it's gonna be in Russia if you don't have to fix it that's gonna be from Russia good yeah. luck with that <laughs> Post now. I mean, the, the, the HWBot server has recently already been kind of like, there's been some days where it's been just ridiculously slow, so... Yeah, yeah, you, Step was just completely... You don't want to wait Facebook for next right week. <laughs> you don't want to wait till the last minute. Yeah. Because you <laughs> might end up waiting... Good way to have sent back in. <laughs> have the server <laughs> finally drop Okay, out. guys, the server can crash any time for the next two weeks. To be of course. <laughs> No, no I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, it's um, for the sandbagging thing. Like, it's bad that sometimes. I mean, by the overwhelming of the uploading of scores, like, I mean, that puts some strain on the server that you can't really plan for. You never know how many yeah. bag and how many scores. But uh, I remember that back in the days there was a dispute about the popcorn time, which is a window of time in which the competition can end. So basically, you force everyone to send back a front of this window to make sure they have it. So that that could be a, that could be a fun. That I don't. That was way too difficult to implement. But I understood there were some times and how to that. But well, there's a lot of uh, solutions. The thing is, if you don't send back, you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, two news. What else uh, besides Team Cup? And then, and then we've got we've got uh, Rookie Rumble, and then we've got the GOC, and we've got the ROG OC Showdown. So I'll just quickly go through Rookie Rumble. You've got Rookie Rumble 48, which is the inter part of it. We've already got um, 200, 203 overclockers. Wow. Okay, so this is definitely seeing a lot of action. You've got Castle in first position. You've got Orion 2358 in second position and Rose City PC mods in third position. So extremely, extremely good job, guys. I mean, that's a lot of overclockers. That's great to see. Seven days left here as well. So that's another competition that's ending in seven days. And it's the same for uh, the Rookie Rumble AMD 42 as well. 
Um, except right now we have only one overclock suffrage. So if nobody wins by default, to, <laughs> yeah, you might be pretty default, happy well, about that actually, one. <laughs> if you do have a system that is compatible with the Rumble EMD, just go with it. Just go with yeah, it. Really, we're going to be second at you're worst. You're going to win something. <laughs> at worst, you're going to be second. Second. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that, and then you've got obviously you've got the Galax 2017 GOC. Um, ten overclockers have submitted all already. Eight days left, so one more day. But I know uh, there's uh, for that one a lot of guys. It's not people sandbagging, but a lot of people haven't gotten their cards. Uh, uh, yeah, or yeah, time that's, that's, to bench. That's exactly uh, what I heard. Uh, Lucky Noob has some yeah. of his card locking customs. Yeah, yeah, I heard the same. Yeah, I think, I think I think that's, a, that's a, an extension. Like I completely understand that Galax wants to make a co competition on Galax hardware and that they want to sell the hardware through the Galax store, but announcing the hardware a week like a couple weeks before a competition like this in my opinion is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You like, want to have the hardware need to, in they need to go and like say start of the year we're going to have a Galax qualifier you're going to need this stuff. <laughs> it's going to be available several months in advance. Yeah, some exactly. people just like can't get the hardware on time. And it leads to things like this, because there's a lot of people who wanted to join this one, and we have, what, 10 people right now yeah. on the actual ranking? So, yeah, yeah I mean, which is really I mean, unfortunate. You, you, and for any overclock, I mean, you'd love to have the card with you at least a month, month and a half before the comp, at least, so that you get to know it, you know, you can do stuff, and in case something goes wrong, you have time to get another one, you know, or order, order yeah, another get one. Used oh, to the, yeah, get used time. to the platform, because yeah. um, a lot of these cards, like, there's nothing really that would prepare you for using something like a Hall of Fame Edition card ahead of time. Like, you could power board a GTX 10, uh, 1080 Ti, um, but that's just not going to be the same. It's true, like, and it's every card has its different. own. But anyway, the, the, the hardware was locked to one specific. Once again, you, you no. I think was it was it was it locked to one specific for unit? GOC? Yeah, it was locked to the 1080 Ti Oscillab edition. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah. It. yeah. But and could... the only reason why you need to do to have this one locked out is, I guess, that they have some unlock features with the BIOS software and things that they are not able to release. On the public market, otherwise they're gonna actually yeah. Like Nvidia. Yeah. Even though yeah. they're yeah, the no, biggest producer of card in China, so that's why they can still make it this. Way. They even sell the card without even the the the, the cooling mounted on. Uh, doesn't don't, yeah, they sell it with a water block, but it's packaged separately. Yeah, they do that, separately, which yeah. is really yeah. cool. <laughs> for yeah, that is that is that is that is very cool. You don't need to uh, I mean, you don't need to figure out how to disassemble a cooler. Not that that's <laughs> so difficult, but <laughs> still. Yeah. Um, I know because no, I but know I still think they could have launched the card like three months in advance of the competition True. and said that we need it. Because yeah, the thing, what would happen? People would because I mean, what's card. gonna happen right now is that you're gonna have a lot of people who just haven't got their cards or get their cards maybe three or four days ahead of you know just right. before the competition. True, you would you trouble. would end up with that whole binning situation. The people you would end binning. up with oh. binning situation or people buying more than what they can or having second end market, which is cheaper still. You can get in the competition, but you know you're not gonna get the best one. In my opinion, there's there's a lot of issues um, tied into that. The thing is, you need a specific hardware for everyone, which is not a bad thing. So you basically like develop for everyone's like this for everyone to. The thing is, worldwide as it as it is, and we know like Brazil. I mean, Brazilian guys stop participating in this kind of competition because for them they are always fucked. I mean, eighty percent taxes everything that gets into the country is not gonna help them out. Uh, yeah. Indonesia, we see it with Lucky Noob. I mean, Lucky Noob would have been actually more efficient ordering the cart, sending it to Thailand to use all corn, going to the event next week, coming back with it and benching. Exactly. Yeah. But but once again, it's like this is because of the the rules for each country, what you can bring it, what you bring, it, and you have the custom taxes on top of that and all this. So yeah, it's always tricky. And it is. It is. I mean, I mean, I, if if I want to take part, it would cost me eighteen hundred dollars just to get the card in my hand. It would land up at close to eighteen hundred dollars landed, and then if you want to have, if you want to buy two, that's closing in on like thirty six, thirty seven hundred dollars, which is uh, insane amount of money. 
I, I guess to avoid the binning thing, they could just restrict the quantity of the cards, but then you'd get How the second hand yeah, thing. Yeah, you have all this in the market, and you have a lot of family. But like on the other hand, I don't think anybody would like if you know that there's like top ten cards, right from the first one hundred from the limited batch. Then I don't think anybody would buy the loser cards. Though yeah, I but then you, do but think then, it yeah, would like, cause issues. Yeah, them, so that's not interesting for them to. Do. I mean, right now, how many cards did they sell? 30, maybe? Considering that 10 people made it to the competition. <laughs> so... <laughs> Still, that's 20 more than you could have not sell. I mean, yeah, no, but if, I mean, they, if they sold 100... No, if they were selling 100 cards and it was restricted to a 100-card run or a 200-card run, it's nobody would if you know. Want to win. If you want to win or have your friends win, you buy the 100 of them, you sell that to the people you want, you sell them after the end of the competition, problem solved, and you make money out of it. You make money out of it. You get a free trip paid for your, you and your friends. No, no, honestly, there's, there's always going to be this kind of issue as long as we have based on specific hardware or getting the best core. That's, that's going to yeah. happen. We, we have to live with it. We have to... Not, True. You can, you can disagree with how that's run, but if you look at it, I mean, if you look at the GSK competition last year where everyone was beating i3, it's like... Yeah. Honestly, I3, super cheap. You can buy a hundred of them. True. What? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, like, if you're doing, if you're not doing competition rankings, you're always going up against binned hardware anyway. So, like, personally, I, I'd be less offended if I got out, bin, like, binned into losing than just not get my card at all, is sort of my perspective. Yeah, it's on a frustration it. for sure. It's like, okay, so some guy went and binned 50 cards and beat me. Great. At least I had a card and I got to bench. But, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, it, it's hard. It really is really hard. Like, it is ridiculously hard to solve this. So, um, yeah, speaking of GOC, what is going on, Julius? So, basically, GOC, we've got 10, we've got 10 overclockers there. And, uh, well, who've submitted at least right now. Ralph is in the lead, uh, Icky is in second position, Bob NZ is in third, uh, Bullshooter is in fourth, RS Nino is in fifth, OGS is in sixth, uh, you've got uh, Alex Rowe in seventh, uh, 360 Nat in eighth, excuse me, Dr. Wee is in ninth, and uh, Phil in tenth. So that's what's uh, the, the, the standings in the GOC right now, because, well, there's definitely obviously going to be more people submitting, but I think that this just might need to get extended by another week or so, just in case a lot of people don't get their hardware. Yeah, but that's the thing. You cannot extend that just because some people don't get it in time. Yeah, that's going to be... Wow. Once again, there's there's a lot of uh, consideration. I'm, I mean, like, the, the end result, the way I'm seeing it going right now with the GOC is, like... You're just gonna get people ending up at the actual like it's not gonna be a it's not really a qualifier for scale. It's gonna be a qualifier for can you get the card before the competition ends, but which is what it kind of looks like. Well, actually, it's most just... of the guys got it. I mean, the Kinub was the one to not get card, and he was still awful by the end of the week. But right. I mean, all the other guys got it. If you take the majority, I mean, there, majority yeah, but there's going to be a lot of people who just didn't buy cards at all because they know they're not going to get them on time, or they just don't feel like dealing with the time constraints that they might end up with. Yeah, well, I guess the Brazilian Which, guy. That's exactly what they. Yeah. Like meh. Okay, and actually, most of them actually work for Gadex now. Gotta participate. But I'm pretty sure they could have they could have got some into the things, but. There's always these things with the hardware that, as it's material, always gonna get taxes, customs. It's in materials like games. There's not this. Uh, that's a different story and a different uh, sports as well. All right, uh, to use next competition. And then there's there's the last one, which is the ROG OC Showdown 2017, where we have. 44 days left, so lots of time to go in this one. And we have just one score submitted by Overclock.net just to troll every single person who's going to go click on that score. That's just a troll score. So it's a 3.8 gigahertz CPU frequency yeah, submission. Yeah, but it, it started like day. <laughs> yeah, it started today. So if you want to be on the scoreboard, 
just goes to Venus Sports now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And it's and it's actually a fully liquid cool system. So that that score at three point eight gigahertz is definitely out to troll people. <laughs> That's the placeholders. Like I was the reset BIOS, <laughs> make screenshots. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that was. Yeah. Like clear CMOS, That was the default run. That's my placeholder. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, uh, quite a lot of uh, competition this week, and actually we're talking about just for the show, guys. I don't know if you or uh, you on the live chat heard that. We're discussing maybe there is a space to um, do competition updates. Just that, even maybe because sometimes it's taking more time. Uh, on the show, I mean, two weeks, two, three weeks ago, we had a uh, previous making a 45 minutes non stop update. <laughs> which was, okay, which was quite an achievement. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, maybe there's, there's a. What's going on? Actually, you know what? We should be checking next week at what time all these. Com- stuff. Because I yeah, think it's that's, gonna be the, that's the first time we have that many competition. Finishing at the exact same time. Same time. So uh, I will check. I will check if we can do it uh, depending on time and uh, guys. And if that happen, we're just gonna do a popcorn time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So check out the OC show and overclicking TV channel and all that to see. Anyway, so next topic, actually the real topic of this week, not bigger update of the. Uh, one of the big, big news uh, before going to the new hardware and the news of the industry was uh, a Thailand event. So I will, uh, that's called the Power of X, Intel overclocking in Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, that is, it has is an event that I, I heard like quite a few, uh, just, just a few weeks ago that uh, that's going to be happening. So. Um, that's going to be a competition on X299 platform. Uh, it's organized by Intel NHW bot. Not part of the world tour. That's something completely separate from it. Totally independent. Uh, but it's paid and targeted at people in Thailand. So we're going to have OC Station, which is one of the long-running overclocking in Thailand. We're going to have Zolcorn, which is one of the uh, most well-known overclocker in Thailand that have its own. Now, uh, Overclock Zone as well, which is the former website where Zolcorn was before uh, extremepc.in.th, which is uh, another big uh, along with but take extreme. All these teams will be competing on uh, a lot of different hardware, like uh, I think the um, Astrog, ASUS, ROG, uh, MSI, uh, the screen by A, yeah, I think there's memory and SSD by IFRX, and I think the, uh, the Western Digital as well. So there's a lot of things going on and um, so basically, they will fight. The scores update are available on OC for the IO. I will post the I will post the link on the live chat for you guys. And um, yeah, that's gonna be cool to see what's going on with uh, with them in Thailand. Uh, I know that uh, Christian Ne, Peter Yan, and so Cine, Massman, and I can't remember who was the last one that was there uh, are actually at the event location. So we might have some patient days. Maybe for next week, who knows? And and that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it for the event. Uh, before switching to the next one, speaking of event, next week is the SWBot World Tour 2017 in Russia in Moscow. So if you guys are going to Igromir Expo, which is one of the biggest gaming expo in Russia, uh, go check out the SWBot World Tour. I, I I know stuff I cannot say right now, but there's gonna be some good stuff going on there. Uh, if you're an amateur or someone at the show or an overclock participate, uh, in, that's going to be good stuff. Uh, the design would be very interesting, something that was never done before. So I can't tell more, but uh, I can't wait to see what the guys pull out from that. And I guess next week in the OC show, we'll be all the way able to speak about that, uh, that event as well. So there's going to be a lot of things to speak of next week. All right. Um, I think that's all for me. Like, uh, what, what's the next uh, next topic? Because I'm supposed uh, to be getting the. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess this one is for you to use. AMD Mastermind is going on a sabbatical until December. Yep, he's taking time off apparently to go spend time with family. That's what I mean. That's what is that. Uh, the the 
the, there were like a whole bunch of rumors going around that oh my god he's being replaced or like uh, you know RTG didn't do so well or Lisa's been taking over or he's being basically shafted but the letter that 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 he himself posted was like that he's basically spent like the last six eight months just traveling and not spent any time with family and he really has to like you know give some time to family so that's that's basically it there's no real uh, there's nothing else to really look look further into it's just he's on holiday to spend some time with family and he'll be back in december and you know take, take over again because actually rtg has done pretty well everything they have is sold out thanks to mining and whatever you want to call it you know they've made money the shareholders are actually happy it's there's no real reason for them to replace him or anything like that i mean he could probably he could probably come back in maybe a different position depending on whether he's not comfortable with the position he's got right now or something like that but even that i think is doubtful i think it's just like he wants to spend some time with family but th- there's one thing as well that usually in this in when you take a sabbatical or focusing on your family, it's usually that you're being laid off and people don't want to say, you're being laid off right now. We take a trans- cannot tell anyone you're being laid off. Uh, but yeah. according, to the, according to the content of the letter, it's actually like, it's basically I dedicated all my time to work for the past like year or so. So yeah. my family is in, I need to put some time to my family. That's basically like, now that everything is on the way, I can spend so that's why there was this lot of rumors going on like oh is he going somewhere or maybe it was and that's speculation right here i have no that info or anything maybe it's just that as you say he's gonna come back at another position maybe not in the region group maybe within amp for the next step of uh, zen zen 2 which is not the case i think which is something after zen the yeah, I mean, and things, or correct because because I guess like because I mean he loves doing R and D and stuff like that, and he's 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 like big time into like design and stuff like that. So maybe maybe a slightly different position. Maybe he wants to do like you know like help with like Navi or what's coming next. So it could be anything, but from the way he's actually written the letter, it sounds like it's it's. it's no big deal. There's nothing really much going on. So one can, yeah, you one can only hope that that's the case, and you know, he he'll, he'll be back because they've done pretty well under his leadership. Like they developed decent products, good products, and they've sold out. So not much to complain there. Yeah. So in the meantime, that's Lisa Su taking uh, taking over the taking over. Team. Yeah. All right. And yeah. sure. that's well, basically uh, that. Wishing the good, then, uh, good, good times of the family then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next topic was about the Intel Core i9 1798X peak of core. So that's the 18 core CPU from Intel. Yeah. Now, 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 these scores look pretty genuine, and the scores are massive. They're actually massive. Like, um, well, G, I mean. Sure, it's two thousand dollars, but yeah. I mean, the sixty-nine GTX at, was eighteen hundred dollars as well, and people bought it. Still bought it exactly. And, and compared so, to this, it was a, like awful value for awful. money. Compared to because you went from eight core to ten core, right? And, and you were paying eighty yeah. percent more for what twenty-five percent more cores. Now you're getting literally eighty percent more cores over a seven nine hundred X. Yeah. 7900X, okay. and you're getting a uh, 80% increase in core count. And it does pretty much translate to an 80% increase in multi-threaded performance clock for clock. Because yeah, the stock then, clock on this is uh, really low. 2.6 and the, the, 2. Yeah. gigahertz, I think, stock but clock on this. That's the thing. With i core count CPUs, we're going to see lower and lower base frequency. Yeah, because they be 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 just up Because like, the, having all the TV talking to the yeah exactly that, that's we're gonna see like I, i'm expecting to see below two hertz see the i core count in the next very possible very possible it, that, it, that, that way the the already did that i yeah, think after, like but. the 32 cores and, and more like, of course the beyonds and all that they, they will have low uh low base frequency but they will kick in based on the tube so we will have like yeah. oh base clock is like two on here 
and then turbo for like the two first chords will be 4.4. Then yeah, that's... for three other chords or four other chords, that's going to be like 4.1 or 4. But that's going to adapt to that and have like the, the balance. Uh, yeah, that's actually that's actually what happened here. So like basically what they found out when they were running benchmarks is that every single core was running at 4.2 gigahertz. Which, well, it was run on the ROG Apex and a lot of motherboard manufacturers uh, don't really it. read how you're supposed yeah. to use Turbo yeah. Boost. Yeah. <laughs> they but go kind of like, CPU specced at 4.2 Turbo. That means all cores run at 4.2, right? Yep, that's definitely what it said. <laughs> Let's and that's go how we end up in the box. Issue, what? Well, I mean, well, basically, if if you end up overheating, right, the CPU will uh, throttle itself on its own because there's a safety feature built into it for that. But given the chance, most high-end motherboards will max your CPU out completely. Yeah, they'll yeah. run turbo I mean, on all cores, which yeah, is they're not supposed to do that. Two, but uh, yeah, at least in Cinebench, because forty two hundred is what. Yeah, I, I guess something yeah. like Prime ninety five would trip would, over current yeah, or yeah, <laughs> yeah. end up throttling all the way to the ground. Yeah. But yeah, Cinebench was like it's not as heavy as Prime ninety five. It was running four point two. So, so if it's run through all all cores at 4.2 in Cinebench, <coughs> which it maybe has at 4200 to get that score, that's pretty impressive, nonetheless. That is pretty impressive. Uh, th that's good, but the thing is, uh, with this super high uh, number of cores, that's going to change drastically how we do uh, how do we the performance. As of now, it's like get all the cores to the maximum speed you can, and pretty much no one. And that's pretty rare to see that. Pretty much no one was adjusting, like, okay, I know this core is not as good as the other one, so I'm just gonna. No one did that. Actually, some people did. Because the support that for that. X3. The support for that is awful. Like, it's really bad. For, like, I know Elmore hacked in that support for X99, kinda. You could do like a 5960X where one core was at one frequency and another core was at another frequency. Broadwell E kind of did that as well. It was slightly better implemented. Um, but on Skydeck uh, X, on Skydeck X, we have FX, the, for the world FX tour. CPUs, FX CPUs can do FX it. FX have done that brilliantly. Yeah, but for they ages. always did that. That was different cores. Yeah. That was yeah, different but guys, it, so actually. And Phenoms. Well, no, I mean FX as in uh, FX A350s. You can clock oh. the separate modules up however you want. Um, it's just the software is a bit janky and not really fun to use. It's really not user friendly. Um, then uh, Phenoms can also do it. I remember running a Phenom where I had two cores sitting at like point, like almost a gigahertz, and then one core at six because that core actually did six and the other two didn't. So um, it the you know the clocking per core has been like it is an option it's just not been very well supported like if in bios you had some kind of p state system like a proper one like similar to like what amd does for their gpus where they show you all the power states and you can tweak them individual if you saw something if you had something like that in the bios i imagine more people would use it but the other issue is how do you stress test that right yeah how, how do you stress test something where um you know like it's just, I, I can't even think of, how, like, depending on how it was implemented, it might be doable to stress test it. But as of right now, I'm not seeing a reasonable way of, like, overclocking two cores to, like, 5 gigahertz, and then yeah. overclocking four cores to 4.8, and then six cores, because it's, like, so how do I load it up? How do I know it's loading up the cores that are actually going to crack? Like, what if there's two cores that won't do the same, right? Like, it's like, okay, so we have this two-core well, overclock, and but it won't necessarily put the workload always on the same two cores. So how do I freaking stress test at that point? Which there, is why... There's going to be the affinity as well that you have to play with. with. Yeah, but that, that just makes it really, really complicated, doesn't it? If somebody made a comprehensive stress test that took care of all of these issues for you, and then the BIOS had good support for this, I could definitely see this taking off. It'd be awesome. I'd love it. I, I'd be all over it because it would just be more toys for me to play with. <laughs> it's really another time waster. It's like, I can tweak this core within 50 megahertz higher than this other one. <laughs> but actually, yeah, on, on Skydeck but, X, we, we had the uh, 7920X and Montreal even, two per core ratio, per core uh, core voltage as well. Which is... Core volt? Yeah, yeah you, can, you can adjust the core voltage per core within the same... 
Wait, so there's voltage regulate. Oh, right, because it has a fiber. Yeah. But it, it has no, you have fiber. to stay within the range. I mean, you cannot just be like 2.1 volt on one core and then 1.2 on the other <laughs> one. That's not going to work. But, but uh, if you're but, within that range, that's going to... That's gonna. I that's, mean, that's you could cool. always just slam all the cores with the high voltage and then use the frequency alone because even just frequency will change power consumption. Just frequency alone and loading. So, yeah, but it, it like... Ultimately, I think it's just like this is something we're seeing really early on. Like we're seeing, we saw the beginnings of it with AMD's FX and it wasn't really supported at all, but it worked kind of. And we saw it again on X99 kind of working. Um, and, you know, I think if Intel and the motherboard vendors can get together and figure out some way to make this reliable for users to play with, they could like, sure, I'd be all over that. I'd love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. What's even more interesting is going to be, I mean, sure, the CPUs are doing this, but like overclocking and then what kind of PSUs you're going to need to power these guys is a whole different <laughs> conversation. Because it's going to get, yeah, it's going to yeah. start looking. We've seen some crazy, crazy. power draw numbers. Yeah. For, like for, for not even the 18, for the 16. For the 16, I, I I know for a fact that, say, for Blender, 4.4 gigahertz, 1.13 volts, you're looking at over 30 amps on 12 volts, which is close to 400 watts. Well, yeah. Just for the which, CPU. Yeah, just the CPU, and that's at 4.4, right? This is basically KB Lake, like, in terms of clocks. Like, Skylake X is made on the same manufacturing process as KB Lake. This stuff could go, for, like, Der Bauer even had his chip at 5 is 10 core, right? Yeah. But you're not going to be able to power it. <laughs> it's just not going to work on a 16 core because it's going to pull almost like it's it's going to pull like what 700 watts. There was a photo from uh, Elkim from the Alza OC team. Yeah. He had a photo up of his 7920X 7920 pulling 1. 700 5. watts from the wall yeah. running Prime 95. Yeah. Which is just like, these things are getting crazy power Crazy. Hunts. Which, I mean, like, it's not hard to see how this is happening. Because if you think about it, these are literally like 4 KB, like, like this is basically four, like a 16 core of these is 4 7700Ks glued together. You know, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. It's not accurate, but you can think of it that way. And the power consumption certainly reflects that. It literally pulls three times or four times what a exactly. 7700K I mean, for a given I can't even break. begin to imagine what this will do under LN2 at like 5.5, 5.6 gigahertz. What kind of power the CPU is going to pull? <laughs> in before we well, need to issue for the CPU. <laughs> well, actually, like we already saw on X99, if you read some of the extreme overclocking guides for like, I think the Rampage 5 Extreme, it said you should have at least a thousand watt power supply for the CPU alone. Yeah. Already. Yeah. But now yeah. it's going to be like you're looking at like a 1,600 watt power supply for your CPU. <laughs> I mean, something that gives you like 50 or 60 amps on the 12 volt radar. That's the bare min Like, that's that's where you'd begin to maybe feel comfortable. Like 60 amps <laughs> on the CPU rail. Like, bring it on. Holy shit. But uh, that's uh, so, guys, we are right now just before, so in before a massive return for RMA on power supply that were in your warranty five years ago. Oh. Yeah. I mean, think about that. <laughs> I, mean, the, I mean, the CPU is, is, I mean, the CPUs, not just one CPU, like the, the high core can CPU, are hitting that much power. That first I, honestly, I'm starting to think, and then like, what, I, what's the next step in that, in the line? That's going to be the PC. Honestly, what I've heard, like, somebody else said this on some forum, I can't remember who, but they said that Intel is transitioning away from solder to the thermal paste. Not because it's a cost-saving measure, it's to stop people from burning computers down. <laughs> Cause yeah, that's true. If you don't where did, delid... Where did you get that from? No, because if you don't delid these, you can't cool the really high power draw. Right? That's true. Like, they'll that's thermal true. throttle long before your power supply or VRM are in trouble. Like, way before anything else starts giving up, your CPU will be completely uncoolable. So, it, it could be like a, a really badly, <laughs> like, a sort of 
you know, saving grace for the CPU. Well, if nobody is able to cool 400 watts, nobody can act, find out these can pull 500 or 800 or 1,000, right? <laughs> if you can't cool 400, you can't make it run 1,000. Um, but people who delid and run liquid nitrogen, I mean, uh, and on water cooling and stuff, yeah, these these are terrifying. These, these yeah, are going to take are out power right supplies there. and... Well, no, mo most good power supplies will just shut down on you. The worst ones will shut down permanently, like they won't come back on because the safety circuit breaks. The really bad ones will burn your house down. <laughs> yeah, but what? You never get a very bad one. Uh, do you want I mean, me to you look, look up? Hard enough, you would. Why? Well, <laughs> power supply. Yeah. Look up on Taobao if you can find like this. Uh, like this. Tiny, uh, low hand copy of 1200 watt PSU for like 50 bucks. That should do. Yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> uh, speaking of high power consumption uh, on the X299 platform, there's something that will not get high power for i373X, according X. to rumors. Uh, there's going to be a dual core CPU on the X299 X. platform. That's just. Oh, and oh, oh, it's going to cost $220. That's the <laughs> kicker. <laughs> to be fair, in Intel's defense, okay, I think they basically, like, the, the price is justified. This thing is so stupid, nobody's going to want to buy it, right? And the people who buy it, well... Two, it's on a separate production line from literally everything else, because it's the i3 die yeah. on the X299 package. Yep. There is not a single other CPU that uses that same packaging setup. Because the i3 die yeah. is not like, they already have the 740, 7740X, which everybody's like, oh, what the hell is this? But this but is a different- 70, 7740X makes sense. <laughs> well, it still doesn't. This makes less. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, we're going from, this is kind of weird to, is everybody at Intel completely out of their mind? <laughs> and, but, does, and Z270 makes no sense anymore. Like, <laughs> for, yeah, the end result, the, the end result with the 7360X, like for extreme overclocking, this thing is going to take down all the two core globals, and it invalidates the existence of Z270 completely. Exactly. Um, exactly. There's no reason to keep a Z270 Apex or anything. You like at this point, you can just go buy an X299 Rampage. Uh, Ramp yeah, the X pay, uh, by the Apex or uh, o OC formula because we're not biased here towards one manufacturer. <laughs> and, um, so you can buy your extreme overclocking motherboard for X299 and you can stick an i3 in it for two core yep. globals, i4, i7 in it for quads, uh, you know, and all the way up to an 18 core. So X299 is basically like the best extreme overclocking platform like platform ever. Right it does That's everything. Uh, at least until Coffee Lake launches and makes all the six cores and eight cores kind of lame. Because apparently there's rumors of an eight core Coffee Lake now. Yeah, there are. Intel. <laughs> Al <-allegedly>. Good job. <laughs> that, Good that's, job. That's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. I mean, if you think about that, that's probably the last full core CPU we can... Yep. Think about that. Yep. That's going to be I the... would think so. That's going to be the last dual core CPU from Intel that's going to be on the platform that you can just drop as much power as you want because that's made up for 18 core CPU, allegedly. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's more like... Wait, wait, no, actually, we're already seeing revised motherboards for the Extreme Edition chips, like Asus announced a revision of the Strix. Yeah. But once the again, keep in mind that, guys, yeah, it's we called don't the Strix know XT. what was the blueprint. We don't know what was the blueprint. Maybe we don't know if Intel said, "Hey, you're just gonna need PWM for 70." No, I, like I can totally see Intel not telling the manufacturers that, "Hey, this thing can pull 800 watts," because that seems like something a company that wants to sell you an i3 on the high-end desktop platform would do. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, if you're a motherboard manufacturer, right, and you've worked with KB Light. And you know there's this thing that is pretty much just a bigger KB Lake. Yeah. And Intel tells you it's totally not going to pull 400 watts. 
you need to be really gullible to believe them. <laughs> Once it's again... Just, no, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Like, I heard the announcement of the 18 core, and my first thought was, like, Intel has lost their mind. This is going to pull so much power. How did nobody else see that? Like, there's no way nobody else I couldn't have seen that coming. Or like, maybe no one knew that the 18 core was coming. <laughs> but even then, the 10 core is power hungry. Like, even the 10 core is pretty bad. I mean, sure, give them the fact that, like, the 18 core might not have existed, because apparently those got rushed in. That we don't but, know. That we don't know. But if you then use, like, this on one day, you kind of... Well, but we of, already kind of know that a lot of the motherboards won't run Prime 95 on the 7900X. I mean, yeah. the fact that you can't run Prime 95 at, like, 4.4 gigahertz is scary. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're a normal user, you might just, like, disable AVX2. Just turn it off and, and roll with it like that. But, yeah, um, it, it, we're, X299, it's it's a crazy platform. I mean, on in one way, it's exciting because it's ridiculous and awesome. It does everything. And at the same time, it's, you know, worse than a GTX 480. <laughs> Since, <laughs> though technically speaking, there's been hotter cards than a GTX 480 once you throw them under LN2. It's just that one, that one's the everybody, that's the one everybody knows as being hot and loud. Well, I mean, here, here's the CPU version of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, it's, I don't think it's possible to cool these things. Like, even Dan Cop was saying, these things go positive under LN2. So, yeah, good job on this one, guys. Really, <laughs> yeah. But guys, I would love to see how the uh, core, the I core counts, because that's even more cores. Yeah, but the, see, here's the thing: on on the high core count Xeons, the base clocks are what, like two gigahertz. Yeah, and those are put on motherboards that are server spec, so you can't overclock them. So they're gonna run at two point two gigahertz once you hit an AVX two workload. Yeah, and they'll and be they'll fine. Stick to their, yeah, they'll stick to their TDP as well. So they'll stay in that, because, like, Intel can't afford to... Like, that's server grade. They can't afford to have issues like this on there. True, true. At least, I'd like to believe they can't afford to have issues like that <laughs> on there. Um, but, yeah, no, I. but definitely, if we're going to see, like, a 24-core someday, Extreme Edition, hell on oh. Earth. In CPU That's form. That's the thing. I mean, you're gonna you're need gonna two have... power supplies for the chip alone. No, we're just gonna need yeah. power board for the CPU now. No, no not even power. Well, we, you, yeah. I, 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 well, no, we might see a reincarnation of the XL ATX form factor. You know, the motherboards which are both wider and then longer, the ones that go to like the eighth like PCI the slot instead nine. of the seventh, yeah, like the, the X79 Big Bang uh, X power or from X79 MSI. UD9. Yeah. Uh, no, X58 UD9. Yeah, X58 UD9. Yeah. So yeah, you'll yeah. see, I, you might see a reincarnation of that form factor to fit a 16 phase VRM above the above the CPU, and they'll you know not actually support four way SLI or four way crossfire because you'll need to move the CPU socket down the motherboard to get actually, more VRM above it. <laughs> I don't know the blueprint. I don't know the framework from the, uh, from the specs, but maybe everyone can because everyone was doing pretty much the same. There's not that much space that you can use. You cannot put the I mean, socket on the move right the side whole, the I mean, like, move if you just down. think about it, move everything down, yeah, and get more space, or use a daughter board. Um, and then potentially put an actual real heat sink, not these art statements that we're seeing these days, and maybe stick a fan on the VRM as well. That we're would help. We are back in the P35 era. <laughs> yeah, we are. Fans on the VRM. But that's already yeah. happened, I mean... Without the fan, even with the fan. Actually, no, we already have fans in motherboards. Like the Zenith hides the a little fan, fan inside the inside the I.O. cover. The IO and I think maybe one of the Rampages does that as well. I'm not sure. Not too sure. But I know the I know the other the other X399 board from Asus also has a fan in the I.O. cover. The X399 Prime, um, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah. Well, either way, they're already sticking fans on the VRMs, at least yep. at Asus, because Asus cares. 
Um, a lot of the other manufacturers are like, we don't let you change the power limit high enough to actually run those power levels. But um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy platform with some crazy chips. Okay, speaking of crazy things, uh, GTX 1070i Dream World going out in October? That's apparently coming. That's apparently pretty much a uh, pretty much done deal. That's what I'm hearing as well. 1070 Ti incoming, $430. Give or take a few. Well, that's based on rumors and price from China. Yeah. Well, also, um, also another side did also another side did did report something similar, and their source was was apparently. Uh, geez. Yeah, it wasn't the same source at least. It wasn't, they they weren't claiming this uh, Chinese site as their source. And they were yeah, like, yeah, because they, we they were apparently... They did the same thing and translated the word at their own source. Yeah. Yeah, Good so... Thing. Personally, the, like, I don't find this card that interesting. Um, I mean, it, obviously, it's supposed to go up against Vega 56. Yep. Um, except if you put a Vega 64 BIOS on a 56, it's going up against a 1080. And yep. knowing NVIDIA, like, they have a big gap between the 1070 and the 1080, and they have an even bigger gap between the 1080 and the 1080 Ti. So... Like, okay, so they closed that gap between the 1070 and 1080 a bit. Yeah. So what? Um, I just hope these cards have, have like GDDR5X in the same bug that the 1080 had, so then the miners won't pick them up. The gamers will be happy. I'm... I, I don't really feel anything about, like... Feel, like, yeah, I guess they might do it with GDDR5X for, for gamers, though I have heard that there's some mining algorithms that are specifically targeting newer memory architectures so it's like oh you can't boy win. <laughs> you can't oh, win you with can't these guys it's like they they want to mine and they want to mine on everything <laughs> <laughs> i mean if there's money to be made for sure <laughs> no it's like we can't mine with 1070s because there's no more 1070s mine on the 1080 ti's now it's just yeah well yeah it is what it is um but i i think like it is aimed at V56. Um, I'm, you know, it's going to pull less power than a V56. That's not exactly hard to do. Yeah. Vega is X299's rival in terms of power consumption. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, there's one thing as well that we don't know is uh, will Nvidia allow adding both the IV to their own custom version of which I'm, probably will not happen. They will do something the next year that will just, but uh, won't have like a speed. I might, we might have like the whole. Time. I'm like 99% sure that a 1070 Ti GPU core would literally be like you take a 1080 board and you stick a 1070 Ti on it, bam, done. You don't need to design yeah. anything. Hell, we I might think. see a launch where NVIDIA doesn't, well, no, NVIDIA loves their reference design. It's all sleek and magnesium alloy but uh <laughs> and the you'll the definitely see a reference card for sure you'll definitely uh, see you'll definitely see a reference card for sure yeah nvidia loves their reference cards because unlike amds they don't suck um <laughs> the thing is think about that i mean they refrain their uh, aib's partners to a part with titan x uh, they never went as crazy as forbidding that Within the regular consumer market for 1080, 1080 Ti, uh, and everything below that, sure, do whatever you want. Maybe they will say 1070 Ti, that's only our design. You don't have the right to do your, yours. I, or, I don't or, see a reason why Nvidia would do that. I mean, the AIVs already next have time that We did it once and we want you to do it again. I don't know. A world of NVIDIA reference cards is a world I... Well, I'd still live in because I don't buy NVIDIA. <laughs> 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 so I don't have a problem with it. I'd just be, like, even more... Like, even less likely to buy an NVIDIA card at that point, which... I, I don't know how you go below 0% probability. So. 
to pay people to not buy them. <laughs> they literally have to pay me to, like, here's an NVIDIA GPU build, Zoid, and here's money to use it. <laughs> That's the only way that I'd ever, like, to touch one of those at this point. Uh, if it was a reference card, because, no. Um, well, then, actually, if you have a reference then, card, that's there, not a big deal, because... Is there any higher-end card rumor also? That's no, what somebody's no, asking, no. and I think... Everyone says everything is for next year. So everything is for next year. Everyone says there's something new coming from Asia before uh, Christmas. That's probably the guy. And then that's going to be for next year. Interesting. Because Dan Cop was mentioning something about a 1090 in the chat. I don't know if he was trolling or just like... I think he was trolling because he was talking about a Titan XP on a real PCB oh, or no. a custom yeah, PCB. Yeah, on a custom so. PCB. Yeah, I think it was just trolling So hard. somebody probably desold her Titan XP core and stuck it on a 1080 Ti board. NVIDIA <laughs> isn't happy when people do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but once again, once again, Titan XP, if it's an AIB doing that, they have to buy them from the store as well. So they pay the price. They don't get GP. They don't yeah, get I know. So they have to buy I, it I know. anyway. So NVIDIA, I think it's like, oh no, we're not. Uh, he just but admitted yeah, to trolling. Yeah, he just said trolling. He just admitted to trolling. But, um, you know, the, the, the whole desoldering a Titan XP chip, I'm putting it on a 1080 Ti. Doable. It's been done before with I, one of the other Titans, I think. But it's do, just do like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And also BIOS support is going to be BIOS terrible. Support, yeah. That's the bigger issue. Like uh, you need to reverse engineer a card on how it's working and on with all the... I, no, I mean... The, yeah, the, 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 pinout, the, the pinout for the chips is going to be the same. It's just... You're, you stick that core on there and it's not going to boot because it's not going to recognize the BIOS. So you'll also need to do something about the BIOS and at that point it's going to start being an issue if you want to run a really custom PCB. Um, but I think you could probably take a Titan XP chip and stick it on a Strix PCB just because that one uses the reference voltage controller. We should ask some of the guys in the R&D at uh, ROG, but I don't think I they will know. answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> if they oh, tried was, it, they, they saying, don't want to I would talk like about record. it. <laughs> this is what happened. Like, yeah, we did that. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> We're yeah. never seeing another tenant <laughs> NVIDIA chip again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know that if if they do so, if anyone and anyone is doing something, and they say don't tell that to anyone, and we mean it, I will never. Because we yeah. all know, like we all know, in this community, it's like someone says something to someone, and then two weeks after, everyone knows. Everyone yep. knows. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, that's always how it been the case, and that's yeah. always how it is. Yeah. Okay. Guys, there's one thing as well. If you get a reference card of Titan X, let's put the Power 5 on it, maybe? Yep. If you yep. like increasing your expensive card's price by another 25%. <laughs> and not having <laughs> warranty for it anymore? Yeah, so EVGA announced the ePower 5. Um, so for those of you not aware what an ePower is, it's basically a VRM on a stick, or a black Hard. square in this case. Um, and, you know, um, it has three six-pin power inputs, same as the previous ePower. It has a 12 plus two-phase VRM design um, using international rectifier parts across the board. So great manual, like the MOSFETs are fine. Um, it has dual output, which is why it's 12 plus two. The previous power board was 14 phase. Um, the Galax Hall of Fame is a 16. This is a 12 plus two. So basically, if you have a card um, where you kill the vCore and in the process it kills some other VRM on there, you have that extra output to fix that. Uh, to fix that. So this would be really useful on, say, like a 290X, where disabling the vCore VRM actually disables your auxiliary rail. Um, if you're working on, because, jet, like, from what I've heard from other people who have done power board mods where they've power boarded the memory rail, which that's the intention with the ePower, to use the plus two for memory power, um, from what I've heard, generally, memory doesn't appreciate being e-powered. Like, at best, you're not going to lose frequency. At worst, it clocks worse in the end. So, yeah. Um, other than that, um, the power, the e-power e 5, like, the main feature for me, like, like, the big difference between this and, like, say, the Hall of Fame or the previous e-power is this thing is way better implemented. 
like the, these power boards just user friendliness wise i think this one takes it to the limit it doesn't get more user friendly than this um, you can that with the raspberry pi as well yeah you can do that as well but like this one has onboard buttons voltage readouts which is really convenient you have the probit belt which evga has on like a ton of their graphics cards so if you've used that you know it's just plug and play with that as well if you're used to it um has fan headers i'm assuming uh for you know to provide to power its own cooling and the it, it is it's gold plated which i personally actually really like the gold plating which might not make a lot of sense but if you're soldering gold plate is so easy it is so good to solder on like it's actually annoying if you drip solder onto something like the pcie fingers of a gpu it sticks immediately yeah it went so this <laughs> makes soldering on this so much easier so that's really cool of evga to do um and then they reworked the power, like the power plane layout. So now you have a front ground, a dedicated front ground, which um, if you've been following a lot of the e-power modding that people do, then you'd notice that on the previous generation e-power, the 14 phase one, you'd see a lot of people like trying to solder off of the front capacitor banks to get power uh, grounding uh, off the front of the card because that rear ground plane was just not enough. Um, so it, it is overall just a more refined implementation of their previous, well, a diff, it is very different. It does have a separate, you know, output, a secondary output, but it is basically a refined version of the power board concept um, to the limit. Like, I don't think there's much more they could do to improve on this at this point. Or maybe Personally, do a bigger card and have more phases on it? I mean, yeah, you could do a more powerful one. Personally, I also would appreciate a better, like, better support for forward voltage sense, which, like, for forward voltage sense is basically um, the power cards will measure their output voltage on the actual power card, right? Which is really awkward if you have a crappy uh, connection between the power card and the GPU you're powering. Um, in which case, on the e-powers, you can actually do forward voltage, but it usually requires a hardware modification to the power board itself. Um, and basically, you pull a wire from the sense pin of the power card all the way to the back of the GPU core, so that the power card is then targeting the GPU core voltage on the back of the GPU core, not on the power card itself, which is really cool. Um, Support for that, however, it's just like, I personally think that should be behind a switch. It shouldn't require soldering as much as it does. Like, I get that you'd need to solder it on one end, but it should just be a connector on the power card end with a switch on it. Um, so, and I still don't think they've implemented it like that. But there's very few people who use that feature even when it was available, even when it is available. So you don't really need it that much unless your power, like, unless your connection is terrible to start with. At which point you might want to just fix your power connection. The main issue I have with this thing is it's two hundred and fifty dollars. And penis. What? That's no. The problem is I can get a sixteen phase Hall of Fame power board for ninety or eighty dollars, something around that. Yeah, but and, uh, yeah, you have a limit as well on how high you on the voltage uh, you don't have all the true true Th this is way more user friendly this is like the idiot well not idiot proof because if you're an idiot and tried to use one of these that's going to go really badly um <laughs> no but this is like the user friendly power board right this thing um you don't need to mess around with like voltage control being weird because technically on the hall of fame power board you should be able to get an i squared c interface running on that thing and then you can do whatever you want with the VRM, and it's a 16 phase, so it's better than this one because they are tech almost the same MOSFETs on both, and that one has a bigger heat sink. Like basically, the Hall of Fame power card is more powerful than this. On paper, That's, yeah. Well, given the same amount of airflow, it's more powerful. Not even on paper, it just is. Um, cause the Mo MOSFET manufacturer is basically the same. So all the numbers are across, like they're comparable across very easily. Um, but this is infinitely more user-friendly. Cause if you don't want to do any physical modifications to a hall of fame power board, 
uh, or mess around with an I squared C interface because you don't know how to deal with one. Um, you don't have like on the Hall of Fame. You either need the I squared C or you need to do a modification to the board, and you're stuck at 1.6 volts max. This goes to I believe two volts out of the box. You don't need to do anything. So you know th this is like way better execution. The Hall of Fame one is brute force. Ultimately, if you know what you're doing, you can buy three Hall of Fames for the price of one of these. So, depending on the skill of the user, you might want to go for, you know, whichever it is that you need. Well, actually, speaking of skills, uh, right now on the, uh, on, the, uh, on, on, the, on the visual that you can see on the type, uh, you have uh, MLR, KLR that, uh, that did actually mod with this new e-power as well. And it's, I think it's one of the best emote I ever saw, like a zombie emote I ever saw. And that guy is known for having... That guy for... is like a factory for these things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. part of his job as well. That's what he's doing for job, but for work. But uh, he's a super nice guy. Actually, we met him like a like from Portland. And like having this kind of quality of ordering and, and thinness of how things are done and so on, it's... And you don't have like the 25 different wires going from the power card to all that. Honestly, but, uh, from my like, in my experience, like for, from a little bit of my testing, I'm definitely not as experienced as some of the other guys doing power boards. I've been not doing them that much. A lot of them fail. But in my experience, it's like, it's not so much how many wires. Or even how thick. You don't need so much thickness. It's I'm actually considering doing my next power board with a lot less uh, copper involved than most people would recommend. Because what I've noticed is it's about choosing. It's really about choosing where you make your connections with power boards. Because technically on a GPU PCB, you have a lot of things that are ground, right? Like every screw hole on a PCB is ground. Every... Um, basically, any random large copper plane that isn't a voltage is ground. Um, the unfortunate thing is, uh, those grounds that you find just all over the PCB tend to not be very good. Because they're grounded by like, you know, maybe a millimeter of copper wire going through the PCB. Because ultimately, they're not designed for power plane. So... That's where like the new ePower really gets an advantage over the older one with the front ground, which you can sort of see that's the um, one on the left. You you can see that on the picture is like that main that that main copper plate you can see that's a ground plane, right? And he's pulling that right next to the memory chips. That is where the ground plane actually returns to the VRM. That's a good place to pull ground. If you pulled ground somewhere else on the card, it tends to suck really badly in terms of voltage drop. Because I remember I had a modif like I had a card modded with truckloads of wires. They were just going to the completely wrong places on the card, and so it was dropping a ton of voltage. And then I redid the same card with way thinner wires, way less of them, and was getting less drop at idle because I just chose much better grounding points. And that's why the reworked power plane, like the, the changed uh, locations of the power like the ground plane being on the front now instead of just on the back, that's a really big bonus um, yeah. for, for this implementation, which the Hall of Fame power board actually does that as well. It has a front ground, back ground. Like the Hall of Fame power board is basically a giant U of ground and one V core edge, which, so in terms of layouting, they've pretty much, I, I still prefer the Hall of Fame for layout, but the E power, if you have the skills, is definitely like they're comparable at this point. It's not a massive disadvantage where you only have like a rear ground and it's a pain to figure out how to pull your wires. But um, yeah, well, the, these that's, uh, these mods are a nightmare to do. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I was I going did. into that. It's like it's, it, you, it requires training, it requires skills as well to do it, especially to do it as it requires as some heat. of the guys. And you need heat. to have like this huge uh, pan as well. so much heat. It's ridiculous because basically the entire PCB fights you to not be able to solder anything when you start soldering into power planes, especially with like those giant copper plates, especially are basically like they act like massive heat sinks. Yep. 
you don't solder this with an 80 watt iron. You don't solder this with a 50. <laughs> Definitely not a 50. Um, you solder this with like uh, 150 watt. Like I use a 150 watt for my eight gauge cables. Um, I know Miller, like he works as an electro, like some kind of electrical engineering and he has access to like a decked out soldering station for this stuff. So definitely very, very difficult to do these yeah, modifications. Yeah. And especially on, uh, the, on the board itself, when you try the graphic card itself, you hit that up, but not too much because the other part is where, like, hard well, enough and you need to balance all that as well. This if you're using a 100 watt solder, 100 plus watt soldering iron without temperature control, what ends up happening is very quickly, the whole PCB of the card ends up at like 100 degrees. So. Because you need to, to eat up very fast, very locally as well. But this is the, the, the trick that you need to get. You cannot just put the pan on the, on the board and wait for five minutes that it's actually heat up. Um, you can, it just leaves a mess <laughs> and you have to do it like far away from anything temperature sensitive. Yeah. Because like if you heat up your capacitors to 150 degrees for a while or well, no, 200, they're probably not going to work when you turn the card on again. Um, same goes for memory chips, GPU cores, uh, controllers. Uh, that's the other thing. A lot of the time you need to like, you need to do a lot of modifications to the card before you actually add the power board because you won't be like, once the power board is added, taking it off is a massive pain. And a lot of like the cards, the voltage controllers have fault protections so that if the VRM isn't working as they expect it to, they won't let you boot the card. So you need to get around that in many cases. Um, yeah, very, very difficult modification. I'd personally, like, it's probably the hardest mod in overclocking, by far. Um, I still think it's also the coolest. <laughs> That's why I have, like, a massive That's, collection, massive the, the collection VR, of power boards at this point. guy talking right now. All right, guys, <laughs> uh, I guess that's it for the show today. It's been a, it's been a good hour and uh, 11 minutes, so I guess we're going to have to back up. But uh, we're going to have the after party in the in the next few minutes. After we so uh, thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Thank you, Tudius, for the uh, competition update and the oh, totally uh, my pleasure. update for all the uh, the new things that were going on on the web. Thank you, Bizuit, for your insights. Uh, we hope to you guys next week we're gonna announce in the next days if we can do a popcorn time extra on top of the OC show with all the competition that ends up next week so don't forget if you have an AMD platform just go submit on the rookie rumble AMD because you might be in the top five anyway and <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things going on the team cup is almost being closed uh, the pro OC run is going on so guys don't forget don't wait until the last time to send back because a lot of competition time as well as the HWBot World Tour Moscow events in Russia at Igobomir. So that's uh, that's it for the show today. Thank you guys for tuning for tuning in and watching the show. If you watch this video on YouTube, hit a thumbs up. If you like the topics we today, uh, leave a comment on what you want to see next and or ask a message to for build to it. And we're just gonna find you back in the uh, after party, yeah. Bye. Bye, mom. <laughs> Keep pushing it. <laughs>